Hi, I'm Rachel, and today I'll be testing three vegan mac and cheese celebrity recipes to find out which one's the best. I'll be testing recipes from Tabitha Brown, Michael Simon, and Minimalist Baker. Then I'll have my parents be the judges and pick a winner because I'm visiting my parents and I don't have any other options. Let's go cook. First up is Michael Simon's cauliflower mac and cheese recipe with a vegan Parmesan topping. So first, Michael adds about a quarter cup of olive oil to a large pan over medium heat. Once the oil's hot, he adds a whole head of cut up cauliflower and one cup of diced onion, and then sauteys that up for about five minutes until it starts to get brown. Then he adds two cloves of minced garlic and sauteys that until it's fragrant. Then he adds in two cups of vegetable broth, brings that to a simmer, and lets everything cook until soft for about three minutes. After that, he adds a half a teaspoon of grated nutmeg and salt and pepper to taste. Then he blends everything up until it forms a smooth and creamy consistency. Then he adds the pasta to the sauce and tosses everything together until well coated. For a vegan Parmesan topping, he adds one cup of cashews, a quarter cup of nutritional yeast, and about one tablespoon of garlic powder to a food processor, and blends that up until it forms the consistency of grated cheese. Then he mixes some of the vegan parm with some breadcrumbs, adds some fresh chopped parsley, and mixes it all together for a topping. Then he takes this and generously tops the mac and cheese. He pops this in the oven at 475 degrees Fahrenheit until the top gets nice and golden brown. Top with more fresh parsley to serve, and there you have it, Michael Simon's vegan macaroni and cheese. Looks good. I'm hungry too. That's like a little crunch. I'm gonna put my glasses on so I can look at the topping. It's a little bland. Hmm. What do I think the sauce is made out of? Some kind of uh, nut paste maybe? Almond milk in it? I think the sauce might be the cashews blended in the blender, but it's got a little smoky undertone. I like the topping. I know it's not Parmesan cheese, but it tastes like something that I like to put on my popcorn. It tastes like mac and cheese, but not like the stuff in the box. It just doesn't taste cheesy enough. Next up is Tabitha Brown's famous vegan mac and cheese. She posted a video of the recipe, but didn't include the measurements, so I tried to copy it the best I could. First, she takes about a half of a medium butternut squash and one potato and cooks it until tender. Then to that, she adds a good amount of garlic and herb seasoning. To a large saucepan, she adds one whole stick of vegan butter, the butternut squash and potato mixture, three to four tablespoons of nutritional yeast, three fourths a cup of unsweetened non-dairy yogurt, about a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a package each of mozzarella and cheddar shredded vegan cheese. She used the brand Dea in her video, so I use that as well. Once it's melted down, she adds about one cup of vegetable broth to the sauce to help thin it out. Toss the pasta with the sauce and mix it until it's well coated. Top with a little bit of smoked paprika and you'll have Tabitha Brown's vegan mac and cheese. This is much cheesier looking, very yellow. The sauce is creamy, this is really good. This reminds me of mac and cheese. If it's not cheese, then um, you got me. I really don't know. So I'm thinking the orange is maybe carrots or sweet potatoes. Maybe some kind of vegetable like a butternut squash or something. This one seems moister than the other one. It looks like cheddar cheese melted on it. If you gave me this, I would not know this was vegan. I would just say, this is a really good mac and cheese. Next, I made Minimalist Baker's Caramelized Onion Mac and Cheese. First, she takes one medium eggplant and slices it into rounds that are a little bit less than a half an inch thick. Then she sprinkles each side with salt, transfers them to a colander, and lets them sit for about 10 minutes to drain out any of the excess moisture or bitterness. While the eggplant is sitting, she adds one tablespoon of olive oil to a large skillet, then one and a half onions that have been sliced into rings, and cooks those down for about 12 minutes or until they're caramelized. Then she adds her eggplant rounds to a baking sheet and pats off any remaining moisture. She drizzles the eggplant with olive oil and broils it on high for about three to four minutes on each side until they're nice and browned. Once the eggplants are done broiling, she lets them steam for about five minutes, then peels off the skin from each round. To a blender, she adds the broiled eggplant, one and three fourth cups of unsweetened almond milk, one tablespoon of cornstarch, three to four tablespoons of nutritional yeast, salt, one to two teaspoons of garlic powder and blends it all up until it's nice and creamy. 
Then she adds that sauce right into the same pan where she caramelized the onions and cooks it for about five minutes until it thickens up. Once it's thickened, add in the pasta and half the caramelized onions and stir it until well coated. Then she tops it off with the other half of the caramelized onions and serves it up. And that's it, Minimalist Baker's Caramelized Onion Mac and Cheese. All right, Rachel, this one is gonna have a hard act to follow. Well, my first impression is this does not look like mac and cheese. It has sort of a brownish, grayish color. In all honesty, it's a little off-putting. However, I do see lots of pieces of caramelized onion. I did not expect this to taste so good. I think this sauce might be some kind of a nut paste. I wanna say almost like a tahini. I think it's the onions that are really giving it the real pizzazz here. I would think of it as a really delicious pasta side dish, but it doesn't necessarily taste cheesy to me. My first choice will be number two because the moistness and the cheesiness of it, that was just delicious. My next choice will be number three because of the caramelized onions would add it this real depth of flavor. My third choice will be number one, which is an overall still great, but these other two are better. This one had that real solid mac and cheese taste. It's got the color, it's got the taste, it's got the consistency. I'd probably pick this one second. Kind of reminds me of a beef stroganoff, which I like. It's just not my impression of what mac and cheese is. This tasted more bland. The celebrity mac and cheese that you picked yes. is Tabitha Brown. I love Tabitha Brown. Hey, Tabitha. Good job. Well, there you have it. Tabitha Brown has the best vegan mac and cheese. Anybody really surprised? Acting as our judges today, we have my mom, Carla, and my dad, Peter. Hi, I'm Carla, and I like reading, knitting, and watching Pride and Prejudice with my daughter, Rachel. I'm Peter. I love golfing, writing screenplays, and I gave myself this haircut.